Hey everybody, welcome to my podcast, Becoming Your Own VIP, Mind, Body, and Soul. I'm your host, Rebecca McCants, and let's get to it. So today I wanted to talk to you about the road to mastering your thoughts. You know, I talk a lot about taking your power back. Well, your thoughts are one of those things that, you know, we can take control of. There's a choice, even in your thoughts of darkness, that is negative and thoughts of light that is positive. It's not a false or a toxic positivity, but a new way to reframe all of the years of wounded teachings. There is no process that ignores or avoids discomfort when processing challenging emotions that honestly feels intense and it creates anxiety, negative thoughts and feelings that have risen to the surface. thinking of times in you know your life when there was a thought that brings darkness to your soul the mind the will and the emotions the thought or memory which is the mind brings up feelings which is the emotions of resentment guilt shame anger judgment laziness craziness cravings and condemnation all sorts of of emotions and you're feeling it all inside. Now there's a behavior or a habit that is being triggered from those feelings that are so intense to act upon it. Your will, those things that are negative actions such as maybe you wanna steal something, cheat, get high, or go hit somebody. All of these things we can, we can talk about a lot of actions that we've taken in our own lives that were negative and was an action because of a feeling and because of a thought. Have you noticed that the thought or memory never goes away? Have you noticed how the past will fester in your mind and mix in memories and feelings of old with new actions, with old and new shame? guilt, regret, and anguish? How did it go from feeling great and fun at the time, but then lead to torment, suffering, blame, unforgiveness, anger, and entitlement? Blind to the role that you even played in getting there. I remember for so long, I blamed, I blamed, I blamed. Never once acknowledging how I played a part in it. So many times I thought about picking up something to drink and how good it felt, so I took another one. And how fun it was, so I took another one. And then, of course, you know, smoking and, you know, getting myself into situations I definitely should never have been in. But you're blind to it, and it's fun at the time not seeing the consequences that's just about to come from it. If you've never paid attention to your thoughts, to those feelings, because we're so busy avoiding them through so many other outlets, I ask you to take this moment just to, to sit down and practice sitting alone in absolute quiet for at least 15 minutes and you know build up to an hour a day and just observe the thoughts that's in your mind observe the feelings in your body and what you feel the spiritual and physical duality of what you choose has a ripple effect in more ways than you can imagine both spiritually and physically your soul the mind will and emotions is internally originating as a thought produced in a spiritual world, AKA internal chatter. This manifests into the physical external world like a mirror effect. And I'll use a friend as an example of the outer chatter. So in our mind, we have our thoughts just chatting away. And the mirror is a friend that we call up on the phone 
or they came over and they're just sitting there chatting to us in our outer mind or you know outer world and feeding our mind the duality that allows you to face yourself one way or the other you cannot hide you can't hide the darkness that comes out into the light duality even cartoons help us to visualize what goes on there's an older cartoon with the angel on the shoulder on one of them and the devil on sitting on the other shoulder both counsel you in ways of light and dark whom are you going to listen to what is the condition of your soul who or what is influencing you we cannot see the internal world but the mirror in the external will reveal everything you need to know if you really look a lot of us are blind to it especially when we're in relationships and everything so lovey-dovey at the beginning review the people you hang around with your environment and what you ingest and express it all exposes the condition of your soul there's a bible scripture matthew chapter 15 17 through 19 what defiles a man do you not realize that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then is eliminated but the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart and these things defile a man for out of the heart comes evil thoughts murder adultery sexual immorality theft false testimony and slander Healed people help others heal, and hurt people hurt people. Think about the times that you have had thoughts that influence jealousy, greed, lust, or anger. It began as just a thought due to a past hurt that just popped up out of nowhere, creating inner chatter, and then evokes within you a negative feeling that manifested negative actions such as binge eating, drugs, alcohol, depression, lack mentality, low self-esteem, or negative self-talk. Now in the physical world, the duality as an equivalent reflects as a mirror the thought. This way it's mirrored through a friend and they're telling you with the outer chatter that you should be angry at them for what they just said or did. Oh, I'll be mad if they did such a thing to me like that. Or, oh, you should hit them. Or, oh, you should order that king size chocolate shake, girl. Oh, oh my God. Did you just see how he just looked at that woman? Or, oh, I just heard so and so just talking about you, girl. There's always something whispering in your ear or in your mind, internally or externally, real life is just the mirror, an external reflection of what is in your daily thoughts representing the unhealed or healed aspects of your person. Who you are in a relationship, that person you choose to be with, the environment in which you live or associate yourself, how you conduct and express yourself, your behaviors, your mannerism, your characters, your values, your attitudes, how you steward what you have in life, whether in debt or in credit, all areas and aspects of your life. All is a representation of where you are spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. And you have a choice to listen to the negative chatter in your mind or even by the person in the real world if you should follow suit with their negativity or you can choose to use wisdom and insight and choose the opposite of that negativity that brings healing and forgiveness and peace within. Basically, just like in the outer world, we have to learn with setting a boundary for ourselves internally and externally by saying within our mind and outwardly to our so-called friends that no, no, hold up. 
because that person honestly made the decision to act or to speak because of whatever's going on in their soul, their mind, their will, and emotions. It has nothing to do with me, and I forgive them. Bible scripture, Matthew 18, 21 through 23, the unforgiving servant. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not just seven times, but 77 times. Because of this, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. Although you said this in your mind that you forgive them and said it to your so-called friends, the darkness, the negativity, it doesn't just end there. The dark thoughts or the friends will test you right then and there again. Even a week later or months later, the dark thoughts and emotions will try to pop up on you and test you to see if you will convert back to your old ways of beliefs that were toxic. As an example, so like the mind or your friend might remind you of something that you said or did in the past. Now, let's face it, we still have these feelings in our body, right? That's what our body is supposed to do. It's supposed to be our antenna to, to tell us, hey, this feeling is going on. So you can identify what's going on within you and within someone else. And in your body, it may raise up feelings of guilt, shame, anger, or whatever other feeling that story from the past brought up within you. And, you know, even in that story, there may be an offense that the mind or the friend will bring up to you to be addressed. Something you've, you've ignored, that you ran away from. And in this moment, you're to rise up and choose a path that will lead to healing. Because quite honestly, whatever relationship it is, you both found each other because you have the same wounds to mirror one another so that you can both heal. It just depends on if you're ready to heal or not, which creates the end outcome. What you are internally is what you manifest externally so you can see what is going on within you. And you have to maintain grace, compassion, patience, and composure to discern which it is that's currently being revealed. Is this just someone trying to bring up the past to, to bring you back down and pull you, you out of your light? You know, after you've been working so hard to cleanse and purify yourself and let go of all those woundings, are they just pulling you back down into your darkness? Or is this truly someone you love and care about that in the past when you didn't know any better, that yes, you hurt them and they're hurt. And this is your moment to have this moment to heal with them. Whatever it may be, your job is always to remain in the light. The darkness and the old wounded ways will always try to surface to wear you down and distract you from healing any type of relationship, achieve any type of goal, and to chip away at your self-esteem. Calling you to resume a bad habit or an addiction or to cower and hide versus facing your dream and to forget your worth, to lose sight of the light you hold within you. This is where silence is the key. This is where I ask you to listen and to hear the voice, your thoughts and, the, and, and what it sounds like, that inner voice that's always been there, literally your entire life, the moment that first wounding came up and those thoughts exposes all those hurts, those emotions and the patterns, basically those thoughts know you better than than anyone you've ever allowed into your life right and those negative things try to use that against you but the thing is you already know you've experienced it in the past and the torment that it brings within and the destruction that it brings on the outside 
you've already experienced it. The past is where you knew no better. They knew no better. And the lesson was to evolve you to become better. But many of us listen to that friend and those negative thoughts that are trying to push us and to pressure us. And it's a literal feeling of pressure in your mind and in your body, sometimes in your heart that evokes the negative feelings and actions. It's the same as if it's a friend, um, you know, who can in the outer world make you feel like you are wrong to shame you and to treat you like an outcast, to guilt you or to gossip about you. Your mind does the same thing. So again, whatever's going on in your mind to accuse you, your friend's doing the same thing. Resist the devil and he will flee. Spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically, financially, intellectually, and relation, relationally. Every single day, you're faced to choose dark or light. If you face the darkness within and choose to heal, choose what is loving, the devil will flee. You have the power of choice to allow that negative talk to grow and expand to the point that it's all that's in your mind on constant repeat, tormenting you until you act on it and create sin or you can stop it right then and there and choose love and say, nope, I'm choosing forgiveness. I'm choosing love. I'm choosing kindness. I'm choosing strength. I'm choosing courage. I'm choosing to move forward in whatever is positive and adds to my life and also adds to the relationship. Whatever relationship it is, you are to be aware that there is a positive and negative polarity in that relationship. Money, your car, your house, your family, your partner, your friends. There is a positive and negative polarity in it. We would love to see only all the good that comes from it, but we know one day that you might have a repair to put on that car, a repair to put on that house. You know, you might go into debt because you didn't have such and such money to pay that moment or you chose to go on a vacation when you know you shouldn't have did it. There's a polarity. And how you steward it is the harvest you will reap. If you're not maintaining it and you're, you're, you're so focused on one thing, you neglect all the areas of life, you're going to harvest what you reap. It's how you steward it. And when your mind is so distracted by this, this and that and this and that and that, instead of the things that you know is right that will keep you focused and on track, then the devil wins. But if you stay on all these things that you keep you afloat and keep you on your A game, then you win. You stay in your light. In a family or friend relationship, even a partner, that means that if that person is hurt and you embody patience, empathy, and compassion that is needed, truly needed, because you, you see them hurt. Also in those times, you know, we need to let them know when they're crossing a boundary because yeah, I see you're hurt, but how you're displaying your hurt, you're crossing the boundaries now over here. Um, and you know, within that relationship, while we're setting that boundary, we need to do so in kindness and in love, but in truth and allow them to fix that portion of it instead of just walking away and breaking potential relationships, friendships, opportunities, or family apart. Unless, you know, there's no other option due to it being at that level of toxic toxicity that you have no choice, but you know, say, Hey, we got to give that a time out. Right. But the key is to heal yourself first within, because again, whatever you have within, you're going to manifest that in the outside world. And this is becoming your own VIP. I learned about spirit spirituality 
and then I learned about the mind and then I learned about everything else and quite honestly I'm still learning I'm still growing just like you are we experience things to understand and to grow by choosing the path that is the hardest which is to forgive is to love to love an imperfect person within yourself and others resist the devil and he will flee I say this because when those past thoughts were pressing down upon me it was all of these teachings that I chose and through perseverance prayer faith I chose to see the lie because I was there I was there with another perspective now only through this time frame to dedicate myself to these teachings and to really clean the internal aspects of me to heal those wounded aspects of me and to realize that once again we both found each other because we have the same wounds to mirror one another mother father sibling partner I understood now and could truly forgive it was through me repeating the wounds of my father and mother that I could have compassion where for so long I blamed you know like for instance um you know for so long you didn't understand the rules of your mother and father um, you know as a parent to the kids and I'm not talking about the toxic stuff the true healthy loving rules that you have to tell your child to brush your teeth to go to bed you know and these kids will resist it or turn the channel when an R-rated scene came on the TV right those things where they had to be the guardian of you and teach you those things until you were able to make those decisions yourself right well that went for their toxic ways too so I embody their toxic ways and where okay I now have a child I can understand now where their frustrations were at times well because I took on their toxic patterns I understood their wounding from their own parents and their coping mechanisms and their expressions of their pain although toxic was being expressed because they had no other way of expressing it. And it took me to see that perspective because of healing myself that I could forgive my parents. It was through those father and mother wounds that manifested my partners to mirror those mother and father wounds that I could forgive my partners. It was because seeing my siblings in the same situation I was in and us all coming out of it with different scars due to the positions and roles that we had to play that I could forgive. And it was seeing all of them to see my wounds and where I ran and avoided until I came to realize the story was never mine. But there were lessons that I was to learn to be here today. It is not a quick word, I forgive you. It is not a day, it's not a year, it's whatever time it takes for you to come to realization within yourself on when you're ready to forgive and when you're really in the knowledge and understanding of what love is. You can't see that when you're in your darkness. You can't see that when you're so heavy in pain and grief. I remember even in the deepest of moments, I was, I was forgiving. I was loving because I did understand. But your body has stored so much of the pain of that instance that
It wasn't clear yet. Your well was still muddy with all of that stuff, you know. So even after I recognize, you know what, I forgive them. And I really do truly love them. And I forgive them. It was a surface level, scraping of the top surface of the mud, right? But that mud needed to be flushed out. And however many washings, how many times you had to run the water until the mud finally came to the top and you could scrape more off and you scrape more off and you could scrape more off and really purify your water. It takes time. And in that time, that's when I was able to go back and reflect on how I felt in those instances. And every time I believed a lie, every time I allowed their, their hurt words to hurt me and believe it and took it personally, it took root in my mind and it took root in my heart and I physically felt it. My mind would be chaotic and my heart heavy, a literal knot that I could feel in my heart, almost like a void. And it was like nothing could feel it. And it was through prayer and working with God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and that's serious. God, because, you know, that's, you know, in my prayers, it was to God, right? in Jesus because of his teachings in the Bible and the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is what's within you and it's that which initiates the internal healing and reverses the lies of the wounding and it's the process internally and externally that you have to take to master your mind and to rebuild your life from what was once darkness into the light And I've made a lot of podcasts about this, but, you know, the first step is to just be done with it, to be so tired that you're willing to commit to change and what it means to change, to know it's going to be uncomfortable, to know you have no idea what you're about to step yourself into, but to know that I didn't know what I was stepping into either. Um, But you know what? It was fun at the time and I had some serious consequences and I'm done. So now I'm willing to have the consequences of uncomfortable right now, but at least be in control of where I'm going and where I'm going is definitely going to be better than what I've placed myself into right now. Clearing the mud. It's not going to be pleasant. It's going to be dirty. It's going to take a while. But it's going to be your commitment to change that you know where you've been and you're done done the second step is prayer reading the bible and asking empowered questions to god no more why me woe is me um you know the all these things ask god questions what what am i to do right now i'm feeling this why do i feel this where did this even originate what is the steps I'm to take to heal this empowering questions the start third step is to have quiet time just to breathe deeply in and out sit in silence and hear your thoughts to see what you have been up against just this whole time without running away and not shutting down Your thoughts are going to be all over the place. It's not even going to be about your wounds. Sometimes it's going to be about your shopping list. Sometimes it's about, oh, I'm hungry. What what do we have in the fridge to cook for dinner? Ooh, I've got to remember to call so-and-so. Sit there. Allow your mind to go through whatever it needs to go through until you start seeing, boom, pain, Boom, negativity, boom. That just threw up a past a scenario that really hurt me. Boom, that was an attack upon me. You know, it's a, like, why would I do that? You know, scary movie that you watched in the past. Boom, 
that guess what created trauma in you you didn't even know that movie did that again guard your gates boom you just heard um you just remembered something someone said that was hurtful it wasn't even necessarily about you but you took that on things of that nature start listening to what you have ingested in your life through books movies music through your own childhood through your own personal relationships through job loss through financial debt Whatever it is, you'll start seeing and hearing what your mind has to say and what your soul has been t trying to get to you to hear that we were so busy drowning it out. And if you do run, it's okay. Find an activity to draw, to dance, or to read if it's just too much to hear these thoughts for the first time. But baby step it, baby step it. Because you can still think while drawing, but by drawing, it's not so intense by just sitting there and feeling it. You know, you at least have something, some semblance of um, a focus. The fourth step is to exercise, increase your fruits and vegetables and staying hydrated to get, you know, get you to combat the depression anxiety and to stay away from the bad habits and environments so when you think about the purpose of after school activities it's to keep those kids off the street your your ideas right now is to create things that will keep you away from your bad habits and the environments and the people that will place you in situations that create anxiety and depression and low self-esteem and drugs and alcohol and whatever else is only out on TV binge eating you know the, the steps I've just mentioned it's just the starting of the process and sometimes we even if we've been on it for years you might need to go back to the drawing board because things might get a little too heavy but, you know, as you progress, it is about increasing your faith. Because you're going to experience things that you didn't know or understood because you blocked so many things out or because you didn't understand about spirituality. You're not understanding anything that's happening because that is the piece of us that was missing for so long. Or you might have some crazy thoughts go through your mind and you don't know what the heck is going on because guess what? The minute you had any weird sensation or thoughts, you drank and you numbed yourself out. So you didn't know that was even in there. Faith that you'll overcome it. Faith that, you know, through your prayers, you'll receive help and guidance. Gratitude for thankful, thank give, thanksgiveness for your family and for whoever is still being there for you while you're in your healing journey. Even if you have no one, gratitude for the air you're breathing. I know people talk about gratitude journals and you know, I did that for a while, but it's about sending out thank yous, just random thank yous. Thank you that you're there with me. I'm having this anxiety moment. I'm thankful that, you know, you're able to help me through this because, Lord, I don't know what's going on. I just know I'm having this anxiety right now. Lord, I feel so depressed. I feel so alone. And I thank you that even though I feel alone right now, I know that there is a reason. I know that there is something I'm to learn right here, right now by healing me. I know that you're going to find a way for me in this moment. I thank you for giving me strength to get through this. I thank you for coming out of the situation that I was just in. Gratitude for, you know, the trees, the plants. And there's a lot of apps out there. Um, YouTube has a lot of videos to help you go through gratitude if you can't think about it. I remember I was in such a dark place 
that I needed those videos that helped me talk about what I was grateful for. And quite honestly, if you've been in a me, 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 me kind of selfish mindset and only saw you as the center of your world because you protected yourself for so long that you kept yourself in such a small box that the gratitude videos allows you to see things you've never saw before to say thank you for. For laughter, for joy. You know, it's also about building up your awareness because God will lead you to the resources that you need. Again, we're all on a different journeys and different levels, and we have experienced different things. What I'm saying to you right now may hold no resonance with you because you didn't go through what I did, but maybe bits and pieces will ring true. We all have different purposes upon our life that only God knows, and God will aid you to gain control of your mind. In Bible scripture, Philippians chapter four, seven through nine, think on these things. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. All right, guys. I thank you for joining me. Um, I hope this has helped someone and you guys have a great night. God bless.